Hi there, it's Top Tip Tuesday time again. Bob here from Insidium. Hello. And on today's Top Tip, we're going to be exploring probably one of the most requested uh, tutorial subjects. It's how to use data mapping in X particles. Now, this can seem a little bit intimidating at first, but once you get your head around it, it's hugely powerful and opens loads of doors to interesting and varied techniques. So I'm going to break it down for you. We're going to make it really simple. And by the end of this top tip, you'll have your head around the basics and you'll be able to move on. So let's get the clock started and we'll begin. In our scene, then we have some particles being pulled down by an XP gravity modifier and they're bouncing off our floor. And you can see that all of the particles are being affected equally by this XP gravity. So let's have a look at some examples of how we can map the strength of this gravity to different particle uh, properties. So let's start with radius. We could set up a kind of a kind of fake drag system where the larger particles are more affected by drag, by the wind resistance as they're being pulled down so they don't fall as quickly. So how might we do that? Well, we can map the gravitational strength to the size of the particle. So that'll be the first one we do. So in our gra uh, XP gravity object tab, you can see that we have this gravity strength set to the default. This is what we're gonna map. So let's go to the mapping tab. And first we need to add the map. And let's open it up. So the parameter from the gravity that we want to map is the gravity strength. So this is the default, but we could pick any of these gravity parameters, but we want gravity strength. And then we need to choose what particle property do we want to map that strength to. So that's what we do this here, map to. So let's change it from age to particle. These are all the different bits of particle data that each particle holds. Let's go to particle radius. Now we can see in our scene that our particles have various different radius values. So let's just have a look in the emitter at what we've got those set to. We'll go to the emitter, emission tab. And you can see, look, in our radius, we have it set to 20 centimetres, but with 15 centimetres of variation. So that's saying that any one particle will have a radius of anywhere between 20 minus 15 and 20 plus 15. So between 5 and 35. So let's go back to our XP gravity. So now we need to set the range, the radius range. So the minimum is going to be five centimeters radius because we've just worked that out. And the maximum is going to be 35 centimeters radius. So now what we need to do is have a look at our mapping curve. And all this is saying is when particles have a radius of five centimeters, they will have zero gravitational strength. And when they go up in size to a radius of 35 centimeters, they have full gravitational strength. So the range is on the x-axis from five centimeters to 35 centimeters. And the gravity strength is on the y-axis from zero gravity strength to full gravity strength. So now if we have a look at this and we hit play, the larger particles should be affected more strongly by the gravity than the small. And yes, that is happening. But we want to mimic this fake drag. We want it the other way around. So all we need to do is flip this and say, when particles have um, a radius of five centimeters, we want them to have full gravity strength. And when they have a radius of 35 and above, we want not quite zero, but much less gravity strength. Let's hit play. Yep, yeah, and now the little ones are falling faster and we're kind of pretending that our larger ones are being affected by that uh, drag as they go through the atmosphere. Very good. So we can map it to radius. Let's have a look. Our particles are also got different colors and we can map it to color value. So let's just go to our XP emitter to the display tab and you can see that we've got it set to gradient random and any particle is getting a color from within this gradient and if I go to this knot you can see that it has a color it's only interested in color value this mapping um, it has a color value of zero this knot has a color value of a hundred percent and this one 50 so let's go back to our gravity in our mapping tab, we'll switch off that first map that we made for radius. So now that's no longer active. Let's add a new map. 
And this one, we want to map gravity strength again, but not to age or radius. We want to map it to color brightness. And now it's saying particles with a color brightness of zero will have no gravity strength. Particles with a color value of 100% will have full gravity strength. So let's have a look. The lighter ones should fall more quickly. And yes, that's happening. And if we want the darker ones to fall, we can just lift this knot up a bit so they get a little bit of strength. So now we've added a bit more variation due to color brightness. Finally, let's do an example of a map. We'll switch that one off where we're setting the figures ourselves. It's not using a particle data like radius or color. Let's go to our XP emitter. Let's go to the extended data tab. And in the physical data, we can add in our own user value data, which doesn't do anything um, uh, straight off the bat, but we can map stuff to it. So look, if we put this user value at, say, 50, with a variation of 50, it's saying every particle is carrying a user value number of anywhere between 0 and 100. Um, so let's map the gravity to that. Let's go to the gravity, mapping, add a map. Gravity strength, yep, yeah, and we want to map it to the particle's user value. It's anywhere between 0 and 100, so we don't need to change the range, that's right. And now if we hit play, the particles with a, a user value of near 0 are hardly moving, and the ones with a user value of 100 are being pulled down by the gravity much more strongly.